I am excited for tonight. Anytime you talk about heaven, it's a good night. Amen. We need to think about what, what we have in store for us. Uh, we've been studying through the ABCs of Christian living. We, we finished up uh, the, the W um, last week. And X and Y, uh, we kind of already covered the X. And the Y is our church. And, and, and it's, it wasn't really a scriptural thing. It was, it was more of a, you knowing and understanding what a church is and how we function. And most of you do that. And, and I wanted to make sure we were studying the Word of God tonight. And so we're, we're looking at the last, uh, the last uh, letter in the, in the, in the uh, alphabet. And that's the letter Z. And, uh, and uh, it is the study of Zion, or talking about our eternal home. But before we do that, I don't know why, but the Lord's laid it on my heart to, to sing a song. And we're going to see. I, I want to apologize ahead of time for making your ears bleed. But. <laughs> of times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. He worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light. We're tossed and driven on, no human help in sight. But there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problems. Just go to him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven, a harp, a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished, we'll lay our burdens down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. Amen. 
I don't know why. I was going to pick that one as my favorite if, uh, if I got a chance to give a testimony, but you guys didn't let me, so I figured I, we'd sing it now. And uh, what a blessing it is to know that we have a home in heaven. You know, we, we, we can get so caught up in, in the, you know, in, with life um, the, and, the, and the struggles and the trials that we forget that it isn't going to be that long and we're, we're going to get to heaven. And then no matter how difficult this life is, and it can be difficult, uh, it can be it can be life changing. It can be it can be one of the it can be the hardest thing you've ever gone through. But know that in the end, this is just but a moment, and we're going to be in heaven. And I, I am so excited for that. Um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start uh, start in First Thessalonians chapter four actually. Now we we've, we've talked about the the rapture before and we've covered this, uh, but uh, I I always go back to this passage of scripture any time I think about uh, getting to go home. Uh, many times we we we're afraid of the whole death part, and and while that's probable and possible for all of us, it's also possible that that uh, we'll we'll get to heaven without having to go that. And and I want to look at First Thessalonians chapter four, and we're going to look start in verse thirteen, and then we're going to pray. It says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope." For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Have you ever really thought about that? I mean, really, do, do, we, do, do you put thought into what, what's coming, what is ahead of us? Because uh, we get so caught up thinking about our troubles. We get so caught up thinking about our trials, and, and, and I understand. I, I can be one of these people, too. Uh, but, but remember, this is just, uh, we're like a vapor. Uh, it's you one second and gone the next. It, it isn't very long. Uh, the, the school year, as long as it might seem while well, you're in the midst of it uh, for you, the, the other teachers or students, it, it can seem like forever. But I can remember like a kid uh, years ago. That was a long time ago. Uh, I can, man, it just, that was a long time back then. But now it's just, psh, you know, summer. Summer March is going to go back by like that. It's going to be the school year again. Sorry to break, break your heart. But, uh, but even in... Uh, I know you're not even there yet. Ah! It, 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 come, it, it will come and it will go, but it, our entire life is but a vapor in light of eternity. And the, the, as difficult as the struggles are, can be, and, and listen, there are times when we need comfort from God. But part of our comfort is that, we're gonna, that this isn't it, right? That this life is not all there is. That life is. It, this is just a moment in history, and, and a moment that won't be remembered by, uh, by, by many, uh, but, but our, our, our eternity in heaven will, will, is, will be what makes a difference. Let's go ahead and, and go, go, get into the word uh, or in, the, in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Lord, I thank you that we have a, a promise of heaven. Lord, a promise of, of things to come. And Lord, if, if we couldn't trust your word, we, we couldn't trust anything there, and, and, and we'd be hopeless of all men. Uh, Lord, we, we'd, be, we'd be in so much trouble, but God, I am so grateful that you are a God that cannot lie. Lord, that you are a God that, that has not only kept your promises, but will keep your promises, and that you're faithful, uh, more faithful than we could ever imagine. And God, that you don't change. Lord, I, I pray that you be with us now as we, as we look at the, uh, the promises you've given to us about heaven, Lord, uh, what information there is in, in your word. Help us to, to really get a hold of that, that Lord, uh, that we have something that we can look forward to instead of being so earthly minded that we, that we get caught up in the things of this world. Lord, we don't want that. Father, we'd rather be, we, we'd be heavenly minded and, and keep our, our eyes and our hearts in, uh, with you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless us this evening, bless this study. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now we're looking at the study of heaven, and if we're going to look at he- the heaven, we need there are a, a few things we need to understand. There, every time you see the word heaven in the Bible, uh, it does not it is not referencing it is not talking about heaven as we know it. Uh, uh, when we when we're referencing heaven in the Bible, uh, sometimes it's talking about the sky, and other times it's talking about where the stars are. 
Uh, if you turn, take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. And if I go too fast for you, because I can typically do that, um, I'm, I want to try not to, but if I do, just wave at me and I'll try to slow down. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8 says, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. God called the firmament heaven. Look at down to verse 20 in the same chapter. And God said, But the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature uh, that hath life, and, fo and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. What is that verse talking about? Is it talking about heaven as we know it, or heaven as we think? No, it's talking about the, the sky. It's talking about the, the air around us. Uh, and and I'll, I'll give you two, uh, two more passages of Scripture that, that refer to that. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 25. Uh, we're not going to look there, uh, but uh, you can write that down if you'd like. And Daniel chapter 4, verse 12. Both of those refer to the sky, the air around us, uh, uh, as, as heaven. Uh, and, and we typically call that the first heaven. Uh, uh, but it, it's referring to the sky where the birds fly and the clouds float and, and uh, what a beautiful day it was uh, today and yesterday and I, I loved seeing the sun and the, 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 the clouds and the, uh, just it was beautiful. Uh, Hannah and I were playing uh, I Spy on the way in and, and my little I spied the blue sky. It was a wonderful ride in. Uh, look, at, look at Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Same book, different chapter. We're going to look at verse 17. Genesis 22, verse 17. If, well, I might get there. Technology doesn't always work. There we go. Uh, it says, That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will, bless, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. This is God's promise uh, to, to Abraham. Uh, God was saying that, that his that his children, his descendants, would number as, as the, the stars in heaven. Now, this heaven isn't the same heaven as where the birds fly. Uh, it's talking about outer space, right? Uh, that's typically referred to as, as uh, the second heaven. If you'll also look at Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 23. It says, their children also multipliest thou as the stars of heaven and broughtest them into the land concerning which thou hadst promised to their fathers so that they should go in to possess it. Uh, and again, this is referring to the stars of heaven. Uh, again, not heaven as in where, the, where God dwells, but heaven, God dwells everywhere, amen? God dwells here, but this isn't heaven. Uh, I am thankful this is not heaven, uh, uh, but uh, God does dwell here, but it's talking about the, the, the second heaven or, uh, or outer space or the universe or the multiples of universes. There are several of them. Uh, and then Psalms 19.1. Psalms 19.1. And we're going to look at... I, let's go back. Here we go. Psalm 19, verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. I love this verse. Uh, have you ever been outside on a beautiful starry night? Uh, not in town, but out of town. Away from everything, out in the middle of the darkness. And you look up and you see the stars of heaven. Uh, or, how many of you all have seen the, the northern lights? Has any, oh, what a beautiful thing. The first time I moved to Maine, uh, uh, I was up here for probably two months. I was working, uh, working at my previous job at the ambulance service, and uh, we, we got a call out in the middle of, of uh, Sydney is where we were at. And uh, as uh, we finished the thing up, we were getting ready to, to go back. We didn't have to transport. I looked up, and I'd never seen the Northern Lights before. There they were in all their shimmering green, bluish. It was beautiful. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, doesn't it, though? I mean, could, could, any, could any painter make something so beautiful without that inspiration? Right? Uh, they can paint a beautiful, a beautiful sky, but it's only a, a replica of what God did, and it's a picture of what God did. God made a wonderful, uh, a wonderful uh, second heaven or, or, or space for us to, to, to look at, and, and it does declare his glory. Uh, it is only his creation. He is so much greater. I look at First Kings chapter eight. First Kings chapter eight. And we're going to look at 
uh, verse 27. It says, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven of heavens, behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. It's talking about the abode of God. It says, can, can this, this temple contain thee? Can, our, can the heaven, or the heaven of heavens? Uh, heaven is the abode of God. Amen? Uh, heaven is, is, is where God dwells. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is what we're going to refer to as the, the third heaven. And this is, again, the, the, uh, the abode of God. And, and really what we talk about when we talk about heaven. It says, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one cut up to the third heaven. And, and when he was cut up to the third heaven, he goes on, he's having a vision. He sees he, he, that, that man saw God. And, and it's what, what is, what's he talking about? He's talking about the abode of God. In, in, the, in the book of uh, Revelations, when John uh, sees Jesus, where, where is he cut up to? He's cut up into heaven. He's seeing uh, heaven. It's, again, the abode of God. That's what we talk about when we talk about heaven. Now, the, the world has this, a lot of crazy, mixed-up views of what heaven is. Uh, some people think they're going to sit up there on clouds and play harps and flap our wings for all of eternity. Well, I don't know how to play a harp, and I don't have wings. And there is nowhere in the Word of God that says anything about us playing a harp. Even the last song, the last song that we sang, uh, the song that I sang, uh, it says, uh, a harp, a home, a cry. There's nowhere in the Bible that says I'm going to play a harp. Now, uh, if God gives me a perfect, maybe I'll be able to play one, but it doesn't mean I'm going to. I'll do whatever God calls me to do in, in, to, in his service when I'm there. Uh, but we have these mixed up views. I've heard of uh, somebody saying, well, heaven is whatever makes you happiest. Heaven isn't what makes me happy. Well, heaven will make me happy, but it's not what makes me happiest. Because what makes me happy on this earth is things that fulfill my flesh, right? Uh, some, I heard some guys saying, well, heaven would, for me will be, you know, fishing. I'll just be fishing forever. I don't know about you, I'd be frustrated in heaven. Uh, uh, nothing worse than when the, when the, when the fish aren't biting. <laughs> That's not heaven to me. What is, what is heaven going to be? The presence of God. The song I was singing, the, the whole point is that is when we see Christ, we're going to be in the, in the presence of God. We're going, to, we're going to fall before him. We're going to worship him. And just, there are, there's only so much in the word of God but, uh, about heaven. And we're going to look at, look at all the verses that, uh, that talk about it. But, but understand, we don't have an inkling. We, do, we aren't able to describe or to understand what heaven's going to be like because of our finite, imperfect minds. But it is so much greater, so much greater than we could ever imagine. It isn't going to be some cloud. It isn't going to be even the greatest thing you could imagine. It isn't going to be some amusement park or, or anything else like that where you get to eat all you want and don't gain any weight. It isn't, that's not what heaven's going to be. Heaven is going to be the presence of God. In fact, the, 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 the thing is, I, when I, I, tonight as we were praying before the service, uh, I was praying that God would give us a, a, a taste of what heaven is like tonight as, we begin, as we're talking about heaven. And what would that be? The presence of God coming down and filling this place. That is what heaven is all about. I, 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 I watched a, 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 a Christian apologetics, a, a, apologist, I think is what, how, how it said, talking to an atheist. And the atheist question was, I've got a question for you. Am I going to go to hell? Do you believe I'm going to hell? And he says, well, I've got a better question for you. Why would you want to go to heaven if that's where God is? Because you don't believe in God and you don't want to know God. And God's not going to make you go there if you don't want to be there. And he goes, in fact, he goes, if you don't want to be with God now, why would you want to be with God for eternity? Because wouldn't that be against what you enjoy and like? And she goes, well, she was trying to just get him to say in front of everybody, yes, you're going to die and go to hell because you don't, you're, you're rejecting. But he was turning it around saying, God won't force you into something that, that, you, that you don't want. God desires that you go to heaven. God desires that you love him. God desires that you serve him. God desires all those things of you. But he loves you so much, he's going to leave you alone. Unless you call unto him. He's not going to force himself on you. you know, not, like that, not like the weird, the weird stalker boyfriend that's not really your boyfriend but won't leave you alone. Like the one that... Uh, <laughs> Think about it. Uh, if I, uh, I'm grateful that my wife uh, 
said yes to go on a date with me and, and, and yes to go on, out with me again and she eventually married me. There was obviously something wrong with her judgment. But, <laughs> but what if she said no? And I didn't leave her alone. And what, what, what if that happened? Would, I, would that show my love for her? No, I'd just be a stalker. I couldn't force myself on her. And God doesn't force himself on us. But for us, as Christians, children of God, who've been given the life, the spirit of life within us, right? We have a desire to be with God. So heaven for us will be a blessing. I cannot wait. Uh, I'll be free of this flesh. I'll, be, uh, I'll not be tempted with sin anymore. I, I, uh, the Bible talks about our tears wiped away, and there'll be, what a blessing it's going to be. I cannot wait. Let's get more into the word of God. There are a few different terms in which, uh, in which we uh, uh, look at or talk about uh, heaven. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7, it's referred to as the city of David. In, I, in, I, in Isaiah uh, chapter 2, verse 2 through 4, it's referred to as uh, Jerusalem, uh, is referred to as the mountain of God. Uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it's referred to as the holy city. Uh, all of these are, are, are talking about that place in which we are going to dwell for all eternity. What a, what a blessedness it is. Now, for right now, we're on this earth. And there's only two ways to get to heaven. Right? And, and one isn't very pleasant. Everybody's afraid of it. Uh, uh, death. Uh, uh, the, the, but the truth is, the truth is that the Bible says it's appointed to man who wants to die. Everybody dies. I've, I've only been alive for 40 years. Uh, but in my 40 years, working as a paramedic, I saw a lot of people pass on. I saw a lot of people uh, take their last breath. I was there during those moments. Uh, uh, some, some of it was known. They, they, the one, one patient, uh, she knew that her husband, he was dying of cancer, um, and she called us, and we went, and we sat with her, and we sat with him. and uh, It was a difficult time for them, right? Death is hard. But it's, it's, sometimes it's harder than we imagine, especially when we haven't experienced, we've never experienced it. And that, that causes fear, right? Because we haven't experienced it. It isn't going to be fun. But it's just a doorway. It's not something to, be, to fear. Uh, we fear pain, but again, we've not been through it. Look at 2 Corinthians with, with me, if you would. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to be in Corinthians a few times tonight. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 6 and eight, six through 8. It says this, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that, this, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. That means as long as we are here, we are not in the presence of God. Now that does not mean God cannot be present with us, but we are not present with God. Uh, God can, we can meet with God in our time of devotion. We can meet with God uh, as, we, as we worship him. The Bible says that he inhabits our, the, our praise. But uh, we are not physically uh, with God, or, or we are not there with him. He is here with us. Uh, the next verse, verse, uh, verse 7, says this. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present from the Lord. So that verse tells us uh, that, that when we, as Christians, when we die, we are no longer here in this body. Uh, uh, this body is only a shell. It is a vehicle that gets us around. Uh, in fact, that, this isn't... This, this is not who I am. I am grateful for that. Uh, I, I'm going to get to leave it behind, and, 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 and I'm going to be in heaven. When I'm absent from the body, I will be present with the Lord. Think about that. You close your eyes here on this earth, and you open them in heaven. It doesn't get any better. If I'm the one that you're looking at when you pass away, how much better is it going to be on the other side? I mean, seriously, it, uh, you're looking at this ugly mug, and then you get to see Jesus. It's going to be amazing. Uh, uh, what, but think of, think, of, think of that. It's that quick. That quick. The Bible talks, we're going to look at it in, in a bit. Uh, uh, there in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, it's going to be so fast, faster than we can even imagine. And we're going to be there. But to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And notice what Paul said. 
We are confident, I say, and willing rather. <laughs> hey, bring it on, is what Paul said. Paul, Paul also says that, that, uh, that uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why? Because he knew what he had to gain. When he died, he knew where he, would, where he was going to be. He didn't have any doubt. He didn't have any question. He didn't have any fear. He just knew, knew, I'm done here. All the toils, all the beatings, all the shipwrecks, all the snake bites, all the things that he got, went through in his life and that he had to suffer through in his life as he served God was going to be done and over with and he was going to be in heaven. Wow. Amazing. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 23 and 24. It says this, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul said, I, I, I have a desire to depart. He was longing to be in heaven with Christ. He was longing to be absent from this body. Now here's a question. Do you long to be with Christ? Sometimes I think we get so caught up in this world. And th listen, we can, we can grow comfortable here. We can grow happy. Listen, I've got, I got fat and happy. We, if, if, if our focus, if we're, if we're, if we're uh, just comfortable, uh, listen, I don't want to leave my family. I love my kids. I want to be around for my kids and see them grow up and get married. And, and I want to be there for my wife and, and grow old and have, have all my hair fall out and be this bald, wrinkled, ugly thing that she has to look at every day. Uh, I, 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 want, I want that to be my future. Uh, and it's okay to want that with my wife. God gave me a wife for a purpose. But I should still long to be in heaven. Nothing should, nothing should ever uh, take that away from. Nothing should ever come between. And know that, that something, uh, something as quick as, some, or something like this, that idea of departing it is not because we want to lose something, but because we gain something. Because Paul knew that when he, when he departed, again it says there in verse 23, it says, uh, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Because he knew what was better. Because the things in this earth are, are again temporary. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. There's some amazing passages about heaven here in Revelation. I keep, I keep having the song run through my head. How beautiful heaven must be. Mm. Revelation chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 9 through 11. It says, And when he had opened the fifth seal. Uh, do I only want to read that? Let's, we're going to start at verse 1. It's, a, it's several verses, but you'll bear with me, please. It says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, with, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld a little black horse, and he that sat on him, and a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see... Thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death and Hell, followed him, and the power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. Am I in the right chapter? I am. Uh, to kill with the sword. Uh, and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul, souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that they should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Who is this under that altar? They're the martyrs for Christ. Those that have given their lives uh, serving Christ. 
Uh, now understand that they're, they're, they're there, they're crying out for, for, for God to come down to the earth and, and, and not for revenge on them, but, uh, but to, to, to take care of the, the to take care of all that. Uh, but, but understand, wh- they died, and where did they go? Heaven. They're in the presence of God. They're given white robes. What a, what, what a blessing it is. Look at Luke chapter 16, verse 22. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. This is... Some say it's a parable. The Bible does not say it's a parable. Jesus didn't say it was a parable. In fact, he gives us uh, the name of, of one of the people in it, uh, Lazarus, and, uh, which tells me that it's not a parable because he never, ever gave a name in his parables. So Luke chapter 16, verse 22 says this, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried uh, by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, the next verse says, and he opened up, and, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. When we die, that is the, the doorway, it's, it's that, that opening into the, the, that next life, right? And we have two choices, eternity in heaven with God, where uh, it says Lazarus, uh, the, the, the beggar, was, was immediately carried by the angels into the presence of God. The rich man immediately opened up his eyes in hell and torment. Uh, but that uh, death is only a doorway. Uh, uh, if you look at other at other religions, uh, some talk about soul sleep, some talk about reincarnation, uh, some talk about being sent into purgatory. There is nowhere in the Word of God that teaches any of those things. Uh, so, uh, so you can't. Uh, I, what what I'm trying to get across is when we die here on this earth, it is not an opening into the next life of being a, a, an animal or a spirit or uh, we're going to be in the presence of God. Praise God for that. I don't want to have to go through another life. This one's enough. And, and don't, don't get me wrong, it's a good life. I, I love the life that I've been given. God has blessed me beyond measure. But I want to be in heaven. I want to see Christ. So it will be worth it all. It will be worth it all. Uh, everything in this life will, be, will have been over, and uh, I'll spend an eternity in, with, he, in God, with God in heaven. It gives new meaning to the, to the verse in Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Think about it. God will be, there, there'll be nothing to fear. There'll be, there, there'll, be, there'll, there'll be no trials, no temptations. It'll be serving God for all of eternity in his presence. Now, will we know one another in heaven? I've actually been asked this. Yes. I, I believe we will. Yes. I believe we will be able to recognize one another. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We studied through this, this, uh, this passage here uh, a couple of months ago. We, we went through 1 Corinthians, studied all the way through 1 Corinthians. And uh, I love chapter 15. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is where we're going to start. Verse 35. It says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Uh, there, there's a question that, they were dealing, that Paul was dealing with here. Uh, they, were, they were disputing the, the, second, or the resurrection of the dead. They were disputing um, the, the belief that there was resurrection. Right? Uh, there was a, a teaching that had come into the church uh, that come from the Sadducees. The Sadducees did not believe the, uh, in the resurrection. They, de- they denied the, the miracles in the Old Testament. Uh, they didn't believe that God did any of those things. And that teaching was starting to encroach into the church. And so, so Paul was dealing with that. And, 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 he's, and, and in fact, that the whole chapter is about the resurrection. And the first, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without that resurrection, we had no hope of our resurrection of, for our resurrection. But Jesus did raise from the dead, Paul, Paul tells us. And so so we aren't miserable. Uh, we, we do have hope, and, and, and what a blessed thing that is. Uh, but, but here he says in verse, verse 35, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? And, and then Paul goes on to answer that question for him. He says, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And he uses this, this uh, picture of, of, of planting, uh, this, uh, uh, of a farmer. It says, uh, it says uh, unless you sow it, it won't die. Uh, 
Read the verse again. It says, says uh, uh, verse 36, That which thou sowest is not quickened, except to die. The word quickened means to be made alive. Have you ever seen a seed? You can sit that seed on a shelf, and it'll keep for, as long as you keep it dry, it'll keep for as long as you can keep it. There was a, uh, there was a, a, I'm trying to think what it was. It was made of clay, a pot made of clay uh, that they found uh, with this, this plant, these seeds in it that were from a plant that was extinct, had been extinct for hundreds of years. And they found this and they took some of those seeds and they planted them. You know what happened? They all grew. They grew. As soon as they, when they planted it, uh, they, they took root. Unless that seed dies in its form and, 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 and it, it, it's changed, uh, then, then there, there will not be. So, so it says, unless it first die, it won't be changed. It says, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. When you put that seed in the ground, it doesn't come up the same. It doesn't look like that seed. There's a change to it. Uh, it, it, does not look the, it does not look the same. This is but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it pleased him and to every seed his own body. Uh, so, so that seed goes into the ground. It comes up looking completely different. It bears fruit. And it, and it, it doesn't look anything like what it did before you put it in the ground. And, goes, and we don't know how, what it's going to do. It's what God put in that seed. Now, now if, you, if you see an acorn tree fall off of an oak tree and you take it, you know that it's going to be an oak. But if you have a seed that, has anybody ever had a garden and accidentally got your seeds mixed up? Could you tell by looking, could you tell by looking at that seed what it was going to be? No. The only way you find out is when you plant it. And that's what, that's what Paul's saying. He says, we don't know what, the, what that body is going to look like. We, we, it's going to be a bit of a mystery to us uh, uh, what that, that, that body is going to be that's, that's raised. But know that God is the one that does it. And it's going to be whatever he wants it to be. Praise God for that. I, this is not going to be my forever body. Now, uh, Hannah says, I'm getting muscles. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm exercising, I'm working. And, and, and she's like, oh, you, you got lots of muscles. I don't have lots of muscles. I, I just have a few more than I had before. Uh, but this is, this is all going to rot away and not be what I, what I have for all eternity. Hopefully it's something prettier, I don't know, to look at. But, uh, but this is not the body. We continue reading. It says, But God giveth the body as it pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. So now he goes from looking at, at, uh, the, at, at uh, being the, the illustration of the seed, and now he's looking at the biology. So all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, and the, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, but for one, but for one star differeth from another star in glory. And he says, listen, there's different flesh. My flesh is not the same as, as a fl the flesh of a fish. It's, uh, the, the flesh of a fish is not the same as the flesh of a pig. Uh, a flesh of, uh, I'm, I'm glad because bacon tastes a whole lot better than fish. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're all different. And he says, that you look at the stars. The stars are different than the sun. The sun is different than the moon. There, there, there's, there's, there's celestial and then there's terrestrial. We're talking about spiritual and earthly. And listen, it's different kinds of things, but understand, we don't know what it's going to be like. It's just not going to be like this. And the next verse says, says, uh, says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. This is a, corruptible, this is a very corruptible body, and it is raised in incorruption. When, when, I'm, when I die, uh, this body is corruptible, and it will corrupt. Uh, it will, the, the maggots and all the, I won't go into it. Uh, I don't want to make Marge sick. Uh, but it, 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 this body will corrupt. But when I'm raised, I'll be raised incorruptible. I'll have a new body. A new body that won't get fat, and it won't have gray hair. I won't go bald because I'm getting old. Uh, I'll be able to, you know, I don't know, maybe I won't have hair, maybe I will. I don't know what it's, I'm sorry, Rich, I, I forgot your, your hair challenge. Uh, but we don't know what it's going like, to look like, but we do know that it is going to be incorruptible. What a blessing. Who, who gets creaks and aches in their knees? Right? Isn't it going to be nice when that's gone? Amen. <laughs> when you roll out of bed and it doesn't take 15 minutes just to get your shoes on? <laughs> For, for me right now, I'm actually, these young, the young kids are like, what are you talking about? When, when, 
for me, exercising the first five minutes is just getting to where I can actually bend my knees. And, and then once I get that, I'm warmed up, I'm okay. But it, I can't wait till that corruption is gone. But even more than that, even better than that, uh, yes, our body fails and will fail. But the corruption I think of is the, the corruption of sin. Because this body is tempted. Right? This flesh can be tempted. But that, when that is sown, is not coming back with me. Because I'm going to be raised incorruptible. Meaning, I cannot be corrupted. I cannot be tempted. Uh, there was a missionary, and I don't remember his name. It might have been Adam Nairn. No, it wasn't Adam Nairn. Uh, uh, the, the grave marker said, it says, here lies the body of, and I don't remember the missionary's name. And it says, the, it said, the, uh, here lies the part of, and it says his name, uh, that kept him from, from serving God fully. Because it's our flesh that, keeps, that holds us back. I cannot wait until that's gone. We have, that, we have that promise, so that it will be gone. In heaven, we will have glorified bodies. I continue reading, it says, it says uh, there is uh, verse uh, 43, It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam being Jesus Christ. Howbeit, that was not... That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As, if the, as is the earth, earthy, such are they also the earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also the heavenly. What is that saying is we're going to have a body like Christ. We're going to have a spiritual, uh, a spiritual body. Uh, and so, and as we had borne the image of the earth, earthy, we also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. And here he goes on to say how, uh, how some won't, will not die. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last uh, trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I, I, I began, began to try to study to try to figure out how fast the twinkling of an eye was, and uh, they, they, they couldn't measure it, because the twinkling of an eye was, uh, it was like one 24 thousandths of a second. It's how, it's how fast uh, the, the, uh, the beam of light can travel from the, the going into your eye and then bouncing off the back of your eye. But light travels so ridiculously fast. I, I had it all figured out at one point uh, years ago or months ago. But uh, it's, it's literally, you, you can't even think that fast. The light hits your eye about that, and that's the twinkling of an eye. And that's, that's what it's saying. In the twinkling of an eye, that quickly, close your eyes on this earth, open your eyes in heaven, and that's how quickly you're going to be changed and in heaven. It says, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, uh, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this immortal must put on immortality. Uh, I am so grateful that God is going to change us. I am so grateful that this is not what we're going to have forever. But this is just the, that's just the smallest part of heaven. I mean, I, we, we get excited about that now. But in heaven, do you think we're really going to care that our knees don't creak? Probably not. Because it isn't so much about the bodies. It's more about the presence of God. And I am so excited about that. So will we want to know one another? Yes. We will have glorified bodies. Uh, continuing on with this, uh, do you, will we be recognizable? Well, look at John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 20. Jesus had a, Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, had a glorified body. Now remember when, when Mary first saw him after his resurrection, he said not to touch him because he was not yet glorified. But later he comes, he reveals himself to the disciples and, and uh, he tells Thomas to put his hands in, in or his finger in, in the nail prints and his hand in his side. Uh, and later he eats. Uh, we see, see him do several different things and he did all of those things after he was glorified. John chapter 20 verse 20 says this. It says, and when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his, his side. Then were, the, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Question, did they know who he was? Yeah, they recognized him. That tells me that when I get in heaven and I see Brother Frank over there, I'm going to recognize his face. Now, it may not look the same. <laughs> I was not going to say that, but I'll still know him. 
Amen. And uh, that's, that's, that's the, the blessing of this. Uh, he was rec- uh, the, Jesus was recognizable. Verse 27. Jump down to verse 27. So then saith he to Thomas, and we just mentioned this, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. So not only was he recognizable, but he told him to touch him. Now Thomas never did, but he could have, because God, Jesus told him to. And Thomas instead fell on his knees, verse 28, and says, My Lord and my God. Uh, and that, I believe that will be our response when we see Jesus in heaven. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Acts chapter 1, verse 3, we see that Jesus was recognizable, uh, that they could touch his, his body. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he says this, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now we already know this from the previous verses, but, but he was able to communicate with them. He told Thomas to touch him. Uh, here he, he spoke to them of the kingdom of God. So, so he was able to communicate. He was able, they, they were able to touch him. Uh, he was recognizable. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. And the same day at evening, when being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. He was not restricted. They had the doors shut and locked. Why? Because they were afraid of what was going to happen. They were afraid the Jews were going to come in. And then Jesus came through the door. Or appeared, or he was not physically restricted. Uh, as you and I, you try walking through that door. I, I want to see it happen. You're going to end up with a sore nose. Uh, uh, but Jesus, Jesus in his glorified body. Uh, now Jesus could have, in, before he, before he, before he was, he was crucified, was physically restricted, wasn't he? Now uh, God could have. He, he was God and could do anything. But uh, his, he was physically restricted. He had to eat. He had to sleep. He, he, when he was in hunger. Uh, there were times when he was thirsty. He was still had the same physical restrictions you and I do. Uh, but because he was God, he uh, he could have not had those. But because he was also man, he had them. But when he was glorified, there was no physical restriction anymore. So his body was different. Uh, we also see the same thing in Luke chapter 24, verse 31. And, but we're not going to look there just for a period of time. For, uh, for, not for a period of time. We're, we're, the, because of time, for sake of time, that's what I meant to say. Uh, Luke chapter, I look at John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Verse... We're going to start reading uh, verse 12. Jesus saith to them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, uh, giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And we'll stop there. Uh, but uh, the, the, the picture there is, or what we're seeing there, is Jesus is eating with the disciples. If we went to Luke chapter 24, uh, 30, 36 to 43, we, we would see that he, he ate with the disciples that they fed him. So he still ate. I'm grateful for that. As a Baptist, I like to eat. Uh, yeah, even though I'm eating salad, uh, I still like to eat. <laughs> this isn't that bad, I promise. <laughs> Just don't ask my kids. Uh, but uh, so... <laughs> I still love that. Uh, the, la- the last fellowship, the, the last uh, linger longer. Is there anything to eat? There's salad. Uh, I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness but, but Jesus was still able to eat uh, uh, look at uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 I'm hoping we can get through this what time is it maybe not we may have to come back to this next week and finish it up Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 says this, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, even to subdue all things unto himself. So what this, what this tells us, this verse tells us, is that we're going to be given a glorified body like unto the one Jesus had. Uh, it's, it's, we don't know exactly what we're going to look like. We just know that God has promised to give us a glorified body body. Uh, we will be changed. We, and uh, that, what a blessing it is. Uh, the, question, the next question is, what is heaven like? Do I have time? 
We'll see. First Corinthians chapter two. And here's a question for you. Maybe we'll finish here. Um, but first Corinthians chapter two. We're gonna look at verse nine. Says this, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Have you ever seen a beautiful sunset? I mean, one of those things is just breathtaking. You get that, that pinkish hue across the, sky, across the sky. I can remember it was one day I was getting ready to leave work from Delta, and it just it was. It was just gorgeous. The sun was the sun was just at the crest. It was there was clouds of the, the ripply crowd, clouds and, and it was just everything was just beautiful. I saw way too many sunrises driving back from Boston. Gorgeous. Been to some amazing, beautiful places. I went hiking in Mount Washington uh, before my wife and I got married, and uh, we got caught in a rainstorm. But after the rainstorm, uh, there was this rainbow that went from peak to peak. It was it was amazing. I got a, I got a picture of it somewhere. It was absolutely gorgeous to see pales in comparison. We don't know what heaven's going to be like. Our eyes have not seen. We'll never see on this earth the beauty of heaven. It says, ear hath not heard. Have you ever heard a, a beautiful choir? Nothing, nothing excites me more than to sit and to listen to a bunch of, uh, of a, 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 a large choir of people singing. Uh, uh, there was, a, I heard a, uh, uh, it, was a it was a group of, it was, I believe there was like Two or three thousand uh, men, pastors, preachers, and they were singing. Uh, they were singing, "A mighty fortress is our God." Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, there was a, a couple years ago. I was down in uh, in Portland at, uh, at or, sorry, Boston at a fellowship meeting at Brother Davis's church when he was there, and uh, and there, just the, the group of guys that were around me. They all knew parts and could sing different parts, and they were singing, uh, "It is well with my soul." And and I love it when I can sing the bass part of that song, and, and my the hair was standing up on the back of my neck. It was just one of those, you know, wow, nothing in comparison. I think about, we're going to hear the angels sing. Now, <clears throat> I've heard some really great voices. I've never heard an angel sing. It, what, what a blessing. It says, I have not seen, ear hath not heard. It says, it has not entered into the mind. Uh, listen, there are some pretty creative people out there. Uh, uh, that, that, can, that can create some amazing pictures, uh, uh, th 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 things that they'd never seen, but, but th they've been able to imagine it and, and write some. I, mean, I love to read. I, when I was, as a, and read some of the, the stories that somebody's mind just created. Listen, our, it's never entered into the, man, uh, into the mind of man what God has prepared for us. Because everything on this earth pales in comparison to what heaven is going to be like. You talk about the streets of gold and the gates of pearl and, the, and, and what, what that, listen, that is nothing. We're not going to get to heaven and be walking around saying, hmm, look at the decor of this place. This is nice. It is not going to be like that. We're not going to be picking up the you know, gravel and stiff, stuck it in our pockets so we can have some extra money. It's not going to be worth anything. Uh, there's an old joke of a guy who died and went to heaven and he has this box and he says, listen, I worked all my life for this. Please, just let me bring it into heaven. And they're like, well, the Bible, no, you can't, you can't bring anything to heaven. Naked where you're born, and naked where you come. And he's like, please, every, my whole life has been about this. And, and, and like, well, we'll have to check. So they check, and they come back, and like, all right, we're giving you an exception. You, you gave your whole life for this. And, and can I ask what's in the box? And the guy opens it up, and he shows me all the gold that he'd, he'd, always, he'd collected over his life. And, and the, the, Peter and the angel look at, themselves, look at each other quizzically, like, why is he bringing asphalt into, into the kingdom of heaven? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Listen, that stuff is nothing. It isn't worth anything. And we're not really good. We're, yes, we like to think of it and think, wow, that's going to be beautiful. We're not going to care. Why? Because we're going to be in the presence of God. We're, we're going to be, I used to wonder, what am I going to do you know, when, I, when I see God? Am I going to, what is that song? I can only imagine. Will I stand in his presence? Will I, will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I, I'm going to fall on my face. You know how I know? Because I see in the book of Revelations where John, who laid on the breast of Jesus, the one whom Jesus loved, he, re he refers to himself. And what did he see, say, what's it say that he did when he saw Jesus? It says he fell down as if he were dead. I'm just going to worship God. 
It isn't about the angels singing. And we'll, we'll read that uh, next week and as we, as, in Revelation chapter 5. Uh, the, this, the, 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 the tens of thousands of, uh, not angels, but the tens of thousands of the saints as they all stand around and sing, Worthy as the Lamb. And just thinking about it, it gets the hair to stand up on the back of my neck when I think of what, how God is going to be lifted up and praised. But in all of that, we're just going to be glad to be in the presence of God. It isn't about the, the singing. It isn't about the, 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 the beauty of it. It isn't about any of that stuff. It's, the, it's about that we're going to be with God for all eternity. And that's what we have to look forward to. That's why it's worth it all. That's why we look to heaven. It's to seek, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. It says lay up treasures in heaven, not on things of this earth. Why? Because this earth is worthless. And it's not going to be here forever. And I can, I can have a bank account bigger than every, all of you all put together. And it doesn't do me any good when I die. Because I'm going to get to heaven and none of that's going to come with me. Now, I don't have a bank account bigger than the rest of you. Uh, but well, understand, none of that matters. I don't, it doesn't matter what kind of car I drive. It doesn't matter. Uh, how, it doesn't, none of that matters. What matters is that I'm going to be in God's presence. And I can't wait. Because this, that's what heaven is. The Bible doesn't tell us a lot about heaven. It tells us a little bit. The tears will be wiped away. There'll be no pain there. That the Jesus is the light. And we're going to read all of that. And, and it's going to be exciting. But the real beauty of heaven is an eternity in the presence of God. Now think about this. Think about those times in your devotion. When you're by yourself, there's nobody else around, and you're reading the word of God or you're praying, and God's presence just comes upon you, and you know he's there. Think about the times when you're, when you're here in the preaching of the word of God, and the Holy Spirit just kind of comes down and touches your heart, and, and, and you know the presence of God is there. Think about, uh, think about those times when you're singing in your car, and nobody else is around. You're not worried about uh, somebody hearing you sing, what they think. Uh, you're not worried about somebody seeing you lift your hand up because they might look down on you because you, you raised up holy hands. You're not thinking of any of those things. You're just praising God and thinking of the presence of God in, the, in that period of time. That's only it tiny glimpse of what heaven's going to be like. Because in heaven, we're not going to care about the one standing next to us. And we're not going to care about the golden streets. We're not going to care about uh, the, 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 the jasper walls or the, the, the gates of pearl or any of the other things. We're not, we're not going to care about the choirs of angels. What we're going to care about is the God that we're there in the presence of. And we're going to worship him and serve him for all eternity. I want to have a little bit of heaven every single day. I want to be in the presence of God every single day, and that's really what we should be longing for as Christians. Yes, longing for the day that we get to be in heaven, but sometimes God has us here. Right? God, Paul said uh, to live as Christ, but to die as gain. Paul didn't die for a while. Paul went through some more trials and tribulations, but he served God. One day, though, he closed his eyes here on this earth and he opened them in heaven and it was worth it all. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you.